This is a four-minute audio introduction to a film showing how daguerreotypes are made. It's from the National Portrait Gallery, lasting about six minutes, and offers the chance to watch Ghana artist James Tyler at work. The Ghana people are the traditional owners of the Adelaide region in South Australia. James is an Australian of mixed heritage. Aboriginal, Maori, British, Irish and Norwegian. He is in his late thirties, with olive skin and long, slightly wavy dark hair combed back off a high forehead. He has a trim beard and moustache, and wears casual western-style clothing, a sweatshirt and joggers. James is working with Dr Eliza de Courcy, who's an Australian art historian specialising in 19th century photography, whom we only see from the waist up. Dr. de Courcy is a white woman in her early thirties with long brown hair parted to one side and tucked behind her ears. She wears a black polo neck jumper. We meet James in his dark room, working at a long bench with a sink at one end. On the bench are various shallow plastic trays and bottles of chemicals. On-screen text tells us James is making a Becquerel daguerreotype, a method often used by contemporary photographers because it's considered safer than the more common 19th century mercury daguerreotype process, which exposed photographers to poisons such as mercury, chlorine and bromine. Overhead is an infrared lamp with taut wires and pegs attached. In an adjoining room James works at a lathe, Later, he coats thin postcard-sized steel plates with chemicals, dries them with a hairdryer, and feeds them into a wooden press. Together, James and Dr. de Courcy attach a photographic screen onto the side of a building, fixing it in place with gaffer tape. Positioning a camera on a tripod, James slots the plate into the back and removes its thin cover. After preparing the equipment, James puts on a rope headband, tucks two red and black cockatoo feathers into it, wraps himself in an animal skin cloak and holds a traditional wooden shield that's painted white with bands of terracotta. He poses, standing very still against the screen as Dr. de Courcy removes the lens cap and checks her watch, timing the exposure, before replacing the lens cap. Back in the dark room, James lifts the plate from its wooden frame, gathers a rectangle of celluloid over the top, and places it outside in the sun. Back indoors, he immerses it in a chemical bath and the image magically appears. With a blowtorch, he burns off the residue and comes face to face with his self-portrait. Once it is framed, the unsmiling image in sepia tones looks as if it could have been taken 100 years ago. White Letters on Purple, National Portrait Gallery Captions read, this film shows the making of a Becquerel daguerreotype. This method, often used by contemporary photographers, is considered safer than the more common 19th century daguerreotype process, which exposed photographers to poisons such as mercury, chlorine and bromine. In this film, we see the making of a self-portrait by Ghana artist James Tyler. The Ghana people are the traditional owners of the Adelaide region of South Australia. James is working with Dr. Eliza de Courcy, who is an Australian art historian specialising in 19th century photography. From his dark room, James moves outside to set up his camera. I'm James Tyler and I'm a Ghana artist from South Australia. Ghana people are the traditional owners of the Adelaide region in South Australia and have been living in the region for 65,000 years. I was interested in the daguerreotype specifically because it was from around the 1840s. It had an interesting aesthetic that made the viewer be transcended to that era that I wanted to talk about when the British colonised South Australia and stole the land from Ghana people. 19th century daguerreotypes didn't depict very many Ghana people. There's only, you know, less than 10 of them. And so I want to try and basically create what's missing in history. So rather than like living in a space of loss and deficit, I kind of want to create like the imagery that should exist. 
Daguerreotypes are a challenging technique to use. Every part of the things that you do has to be 100% precise to take out that unpredictability of the chemical reactions that happen on the plate. James and I have been having conversations for uh, over 18 months now, basically thinking about um, the marriage between this kind of history of daguerreotype photography in the colonies and the colonial context in which it comes, as well as, you know, what kind of commentary can be said on reactivating the process in 2022. So the whole process takes us around five hours today as we kind of go over those steps of um, preparing the plate, taking the picture, gilding and developing. So have to mix up multiple chemicals before the process. Things have to be warm to a certain temperature. They have to be completely dry of moisture. Things have to happen for specific durations of time for each part of the process to have the chemical reaction. And if they don't, then the image doesn't work. Yeah, it's nice and tight. The process isn't like the digital process where you just click and take a picture. The exposure takes up to 10 minutes. The slightest breath will make your body move and the image will be blurry. I guess in many ways, like I'm trying to decolonize and indigenize the daguerreotype by wearing Ghana clothing in the photograph. Two minutes, 30. All the cultural material that I wore during the photo are really significant and really important cultural objects for Ghana people to wear the Ghana uh, cloak and a shield and the red cockatoo feathers. It's about pride. Six minutes. While I'm the one who removed and put on the lens cap, that idea of the photographer in a 19th century context is very much still James's role in terms of um, self-representation, staging of the picture. And I, guess we're just gonna pull I guess my strike rate at creating a daguerreotype is about half, so half go wrong and half turn out perfect. You don't really pick up a mistake in the process until the image is developed and that takes about two hours to get to there so when you get to the point where the image is unusable it can be quite disheartening and then you have to start over again. Is it the quality of the water that you're using or is it the chemistry is working at its most efficient? Is it the right time of the year when the sun's out and the weather might, it might be raining and you can't develop the image or it's too cold and the iodine's running too slow. And sometimes it can be so frustrating that you never want to make another daguerreotype again, but you, it's mirror or lure kind of brings you back to it every time. When everything goes right with the process, it's one of the most amazing experiences to see the image come through for the first time. I see making like a Ghana cultural weapon, like a wooden weapon, no different to making a 19th century daguerreotype because even though one's a European technology and another one's a Ghana technology, they're essentially a tradition and that's like fundamentally important to me. The final daguerreotype shows James's self-portrait. White letters on a purple background invite us to explore the collection, npg.org.uk. Audio description written by Louise Fryer and voiced by Fern Lullum for Vocalise.